Hi, Mariano Gomez, the Dynamics GP Blogster here. Today, I want to start a three-part series of videos showing you how to leverage UI flows, Microsoft Dynamics GP, Power Automate, AI Builder, all in one to build an end-to-end -end solution. The idea here is we're going to take a payables transaction from a form entry processing in AI Builder using Power Apps. And we'll run that through a cycle of UI flows via Microsoft Power Automate to record the transaction in Microsoft Dynamics GP. How fun is that? Well, let's get started with part one of our series. And here's how we do it. For today's episode, we're going to use Microsoft Dynamics GP to demonstrate UI flow capabilities available with Power Automate. As an example, I'm going to walk you through a payables transaction entry. If I click on transaction entry under my purchasing area page, this will actually bring up the payables transaction entry window. The payables transaction entry window allows me to voucherize a number of payables transaction types. In this case, I can enter an invoice, a finance charge, a miscellaneous charge, a return, or a credit memo. For this particular demonstration, we will be using an invoice. As part of that data entry process, we can proceed to enter a batch ID. A batch ID is nothing more than a placeholder that allows unposted transactions to reside while being reviewed by users. So I'm just gonna enter here a transaction demo and hit save. This will close out my batch entry window, which then allows me to move to the different fields that allow me to capture information regarding this transaction. In this case, I can enter a vendor ID, which can be selected via the lookup window, or I can simply type it. And then um, advancing, since I'm entering an invoice, I can then capture that document number that is submitted by my vendor. In this case, let's say we're using a hypothetical INV 34567 as my invoice number. And if I now go to the purchase amount, I can effectively enter the amount of that invoice. So let's say this is $234 with 56 cents. If I tab off, I can then continue to enter the different field values that allow me to complete this transaction. For now, I'm gonna hit save. So now I have entered and captured a transaction in the payables transaction entry window. And this is going to be the same flow we're gonna be implementing with UI flows to demonstrate how we can automate data entry in an ERP system, for example, Microsoft Dynamics GP. As a prerequisite to running UI flows, you must download the browser extension and install it first. You can go to the UI flow setup page available in Microsoft Docs. I'm gonna put a link to this in the video below. Please note that this extension is available for Microsoft Edge, the Chromium version, or Google Chrome. You now have the ability to, once this extension is installed, uh, begin the process of uh, building your UI flows. A couple of things here in, in Edge Chromium, you will want to go to extensions and ensure that your extension is enabled. So once you know this, there will be uh, an option here on the address bar or next to the address bar that does tell you that that particular extension is enabled. That said, we can then proceed to the Power Automate interface by going to us.flow.microsoft.com or powerautomate.com, whichever you prefer. And that will basically drop you here on the homepage. The homepage looks obviously something like this. You can click on My Flows, click on UI Flows, and this will allow you to begin building your UI flow. So I'm gonna hit the Create UI Flow option here. I'm gonna select Desktop App and click on Next. But please be aware that you can also create a browser-based recording, which uses the Selenium extension for your browser. And But that will be a subject of another topic as I proceed to complete 
this particular UI flow along the lines of automating Microsoft Dynamics GP desktop application. So we're going to call this GP payables transaction entry, and I'm going to click next here. You are asked to set up some input fields for your application. Well, if you remember correctly, when we were building our transaction entry, we relied on being able to enter a batch ID, a vendor ID, a document number, and a purchase amount as the very basic components to record this transaction. So we're going to follow the same inputs and use the same inputs while we build our UI flow. So I'm just going to switch over here. And I'm going to call this input label batch number. And for now, I'm going to set it to RPA demo as my sample for that particular field. And we'll call this batch number. I'm going to add a new input. And we're going to call this vendor ID. And the sample data would be Ace Travel 001. And we're going to label this as vendor ID. Subsequently, we're going to enter an invoice number. And we're going to say this is INV and add a description to it. So we're going to call this document number. And we can actually add a final input. Um, we're going to call this purchase amount. So this will be our invoice value. And let's say this is 100.25. And we're going to enter a description for that. And we're going to call this purchase amount. So now that we have our inputs, we can click next. And as you can see now, you have the opportunity to begin recording the steps for your application. So if I click on record app, I can then launch the recorder. And by launching the recorder, what I'm going to do is I'm going to then be able to reproduce the steps that I actually did when I was manually entering the transaction by using the inputs that I just defined for my UI flow. So I'm going to click on launch the recorder. And that should basically open this little applet here from uh, the extension that I installed on my browser. So now I'm just going to switch over to Microsoft Dynamics GP, and I'm going to click on Record here. And here, I'm going to choose the Transaction Entry option, OK? And now I can proceed to record the different steps that enabled me to define the transaction. So the first thing is I'm going to go to the batch ID field and I'm going to use the input and select batch number from here. Then I'm going to position myself on the batch ID field and let it flow, no pun intended. So let me click on add batch and then immediately I'm going to save this batch, which closes out the window. Now I can move to additional fields, like in this case, the vendor ID. I can choose to use the input and select vendor ID position myself once more in the field, which will then allow me to type that particular value using UI flow, of course. And then I can use once more the input for the invoice number field and position myself on the document number that types out the field for me. And I can continue down the list, position myself on the purchase amount, use input and select the purchase amount from here, and then have the system type that number out for me. So once I'm done, I can then hit the save button and that records the steps for my UI flow. Now I'm going to click done, which will then allow me to go back to UI flow. Now, if I expand the run Microsoft Dynamics GP script, I can see all the different steps that were captured as part of the recording of the payables transaction. Uh, one particular thing about GP is we have to use the tab sequence to basically record the send key values because otherwise, um, due to the construction, a little bit of the architecture, we're not going to be able to record the actual mouse clicks. So that's something to keep in mind if you are actually doing implementations of this type for Microsoft Dynamics GP. Now, the other thing here is I don't want the application to launch uh, by itself. The reason why is because I cannot pass in the set file parameter that is needed as that is still not supported by UI flow. So probably a downside to it, but that's not the purpose of uh, this video. This video is basically focused on uh, the different steps required to uh, build out a UI flow and automate some particular uh, data entry in, in a system. So now I'm going to hit next here. And now you have the, define, the ability to define outputs. And those outputs are used or consumed throughout the UI flow 
if you're interacting with various applications, you can pass values from one application to another. And that's what those outputs are for. Okay, so we don't have that in this particular case. So I'm going to hit next here. And now we enter into the phase of testing this UI flow. So I'm just going to go ahead here and click on batch number. We're going to enter something like UI flow demo. For our vendor ID, we can use the same age travel. Why not? For invoice number, we're going to try INV002322. And for purchase amount, we're going to enter $45.66. So if I click on test now, this should actually begin the process of testing my UI flow. So if everything works properly, all the different steps that I previously recorded should be now um, in effect in this particular flow. So let's see. That's great. Now that we've tested our UI flow, we can see that every step completed successfully. And this concludes part one of my video series on automating Microsoft Dynamics GP and particularly using UI flows with Microsoft Dynamics GP. For part two, we will then show how we can call this particular UI flow from a flow, from an actual flow. And then in part three of our series, we will couple this with some AI builder to see how we can use form processing combined with um, UI flows uh, to make an end-to-end -end solution. Thank you very much for watching.